Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Well, well, it's, what? it's true. <laughs> it's me? No, it's true. Oh, it's true. Yes, it's Loveline. Let me get the phone number out. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Fax number 310854. 4455. I'm Adam Carroll. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And listen carefully to that because that's the last time he'll say it the evening. I will start saying it correctly right. about 11 o'clock, but then I fade out. You know my attention span. I know. Hey, guess who we have coming in here tomorrow night? Adam West. The one and only Adam West. You know him from the original Batman series and also. Uh, yeah. Well, he. Uh, Okay, and also from the other uh, stuff uh, that was related to Batman and the Deftones on Thursday night. So uh, still plenty of week left here on Love Line. And they're stuck with us tonight. Yes, he did. Uh, Engineer Mike just whispered in my ear that he did The Simpsons. And I, oh. Sorry. Who is that, Drew? Who's beeping you? Hospital. Real doctor. Can't you put that thing on buzz yes, or hum? Yes, every night it is usually on buzz. Believe me, it does go off. Oh, really? Tonight I forgot to do that. Well, is that why there's that little saliva dripping from the side of your lip yes, around 1030? Yes, right. All right, you ready to go out and help people? Let's go. All right. Andrea, 14, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hey. Um, I had a question. Do guys my age like girls with, like, big chests? Um, hold on. Let me consult my uh, panel of experts. Yes. Okay. Why? Do you have a big chest? No. Okay. It's not the only thing they like. Here's what guys like about big chests. Guys want, at a certain age, actually uh, that certain age would be maybe mm, 10 through 90. (laughs) They want as much of what they don't have as possible. Meaning, a man can feel his breasts, he's got a little nipple there, he's got a little swell there, there's a little flesh there, and that's a small breast. Now, he wants as, as far north as that as he can find, and that would be large breasts. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And guys do like the large breasts, but let me say this, not all guys like the big breasts. As a matter of fact, there's a limit to most guys' uh, breast size love, if that made any sense at all. Meaning, meaning there is too big for many, many guys. Not me, but many, many guys. <laughs> Andrew, why do you ask this question? What's going on? Oh, well, because, like, a lot of the guys in my class just, like, ignore me. But then mm-hmm. they go for some girls with, like, really big, big chests. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, but... Uh, it's all right. I'm, I'm done with it now. Drew, well, are you playing hockey over there at that no, mic? Just, First, uh, you... Something about... Look, look how I have to sit with this damn thing. All right, but you actually hit it with your shoulder I know. two seconds ago, and now you banged it with your wrist. Yes, yes sir. For Christ's sake, how, how long have you been in radio? Just stay away from that thing. Just talk <laughs> into it. Or just stay away from it. That'd be nice. Okay, go go on vacation. All right, all right Andrew, Andrew. What, what, so what, what do you think? I don't know. I have to grow some breasts. No, 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 no. no, no. Listen, no, no, do no. not dwell on the breast thing. And, and listen, let me. I'm giving this out to everybody. Do not dwell on whatever it is you think people don't like you for. It's just an excuse. Some people have a big nose, and they never get past it. Oh, no one likes me because of my big nose. Some people have a wide ass there, or no ass or, or bad skin or whatever it is. They just dwell on it. Now, that could be a small factor, but it's probably just that. Just a small factor. And take a look at all the uh, big-time supermodels. None of them are anything bigger than a uh, B or C cup. Also, none none of the people that turn out like that, so to speak, start out that way. I mean, that's why we have such a good time, the public at large, looking at pictures of before they were stars kind of thing, when they were in high school. Like my cohort Drew over here, who's... uh, you, just, you, you set me up for that one. You set yourself up for it. <laughs> yes. We had his uh, high school uh, senior portrait uh, faxed in here yesterday by some some saint. <laughs> and, man, his hair was parted way over, a little below his right ear. I think uh, it was somewhere around his armpit he'd actually parted his hair. He was a little bit chunky. He was sporting the uh, big Dan Tana collar. He was a mess. Well, look at him now. He's much better than average looking. Okay. Thank you. I think we helped Andrea. All hey right. there, Andrea. It'll be all right. Yeah, Andrea, believe me. You, you don't feel any different than a lot of other people. In fact, probably most 14-year-olds. Mm-hmm. George, 18, you're on Loveline. 
Hi, Drew. Hi, uh, Adam. How's it going? Good. All right. Um, I've only got a, a little problem here. I've had it for quite a while, though. Um, I have been dating girls for like the last past three years, and I just got a real heavy relationship that's been close to a year. And uh, it started out really good. We were really good friends and all, and uh, we moved into the physical part of the relationship. And then once things got too intense for her, she wanted out of it right away because she thought that was the only reason I was in the relationship. And mm. I found lately I've had a couple of small relationships since it went so far on my last one that I wanted to go right almost like almost to sex right away with my relationships and they can't handle that. Mm. But I really can't handle slowing down so much that I it's like a craving I can't I can't live without. Yeah. Now let, let's just backtrack for a second here. You went out with this last girl and you said you're friends with her for quite a long time. Yeah, we were, we were real good friends before we started going out. It was a great relationship. Yeah, and how long were you friends with her? Um, probably two or three years beforehand. All right, and then so you went out. How long before you started having sex? Oh, we never actually did have sex. I mean, it almost got to that point, and then things broke up. Uh, George, how can you miss something you haven't had? No, no, I mean, it's 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 not like the sex. It's like um, just being with a girl and having a, like total physical intimacy with them. I, mean, I, just, I want that all the time, and when do, I'm with now, somebody... Now, do you, do you just just kind of use your sensibilities for a second to yeah. Adam? I'm talking to Adam for a second. What's your kind of t feelings about this guy? Does he sound like the kind of guy that would force sex on somebody or f anything physical on them? No. On the other hand, do you kind of get the feeling that he might be, like, emotionally and, and sort of s could potentially smother somebody and be real intense with them and... And uh, part of that could be a desire for physical. Well, animals. again, you're no. leading the moron, but yes. No, I'm, but, but I'm just, because I don't get the sense. I, he, as soon as he started talking, he just didn't, I didn't get the feeling that, that that's the right, he may be mis distorting. He All may right, be distorting I'll, what's I'll, going I'll on. Tell you what, I'll tell you what's happening. George's penis is on first base, but his brain is already rounding third. I don't know. Something, something's not right about the way... George, you're a little intense is yeah, what it is. Right, you're, right. you're saying it's sexually intense, but you're, since you're not having sex, we're going to rule that out. You're not intimidating the women with, with the... It's not that they can't handle the physical end of the relationship. They cannot handle the emotional end of the relationship, which is you're smothering them like a huggy blanket. What do you think? Well, um, the last girl I went out with, she says, well... She wants more of the emotional before we get into the physical, mm. and I just have the craving just to go right into the physical because it's hard to like be right next to your woman right there and then like not do something. But George, have yeah. you ever been with a woman? I have never had sex with a woman. No. So see, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, it's 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 well, not. I don't, really, I don't really want to have sex right now. I I, I think I'm gonna wait a while because there's just too much stuff out there happening, mm -hmm. and I fear of getting somebody pregnant. Describe George to me, Adam. Excuse Desc me? Describe George? Yeah. <laughs> you you want me to ruin George here? No, actually describe what, what, based on what you're hearing, what you feel you're hearing. Oh, not, a, then, phys and, not a physical description? Either. And then I want you to describe one of the girls he's dating, too. Because I think that's, that's the... Well, where I'm getting at is I think they... they it's it's who he's dating and what their expectations are for a relationship and where he's at. I mean, it, it's all, it's all kind of... You know what I'm saying? It's all very intense. As yes, you George, it. you're adding a uh, false sense of urgency to your relationships. You're turning into a sort of Romeo Juliet type thing, and nothing's really going on. Okay. I mean, you're not having sex with the people, and I know that it's it it you can still be physical with someone and not actually have intercourse, but it usually can only get so intense on a physical level. And, uh, when you're having intercourse, if you're not having intercourse, it, it's really hard to get that that level of intensity. So, George, you're a big thinker. You may just be guilty of doing a little too much thinking. Now, you're wording it in a sort of way that makes you feel good as a male, which is basically you got too many hands and your nuts are too big and you're too excited and you're scaring the women. But really what's scaring the women is the psychological stuff, is the emotional stuff. And, and you're, he's choosing women like himself, probably, who are sort of overly intense and not... You know, his expectations are quite different than the people he's choosing, I suspect. Yes. And it's very important to get hooked up with people that have the same expectations. You know, it's, it's, it's not unlike pulling into a fast food restaurant. If you're, you really have to order what's on the menu.
you cannot pull into uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, talk in the speaker, and tell the guy right. you went linguine with clam sauce right, because right, right. they don't have it there. Right. And you can sit there and you can honk your horn and you can raise hell, but they don't have it. Right. If you're jonesing for e- some exactly. some exactly. nuggets, you got to pull in there. And if you want the clam sauce, you got to go to the Italian exactly. place. Exactly. Now I'm getting hungry. Frank, 26, you're on Love Line. Hey, hello, guys. Hey. Okay, um, my problem here is uh, my girlfriend here is threatening to leave me. That, uh, well, first of all, my job permits me, you know, I, I tried, you know, some traveling, you know, tra- permits me to drive all over the Southwest and stuff. Mm-hmm. She's threatening to leave me because I am going to Las Vegas. You're going to work at, trust me. you're going to work at the IHOP in Vegas? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a dealer transporter. And, uh. Well, wait, what do you transport? Uh, mobile homes. Ooh. <laughs> Truck driver. Truck driver. I'll tell you, the only bigger white trash than the people actually live in the in the mobile homes are the people who actually mobilize the mobile homes by taking them places. Oh, I'm actually a respectable guy. Are you? Yes, I Now, am. wait a minute. Do you, do you do the mobile homes that come in two pieces and you put them together? Yes, sir. And they got the big uh, thing of visqueen uh What's fisqueen? Like cellophane it, on the it's back? It's plastic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that comes in two, ha- two halves. It's yeah. split right down the middle. Yes, that's correct. Do you assemble those? Uh, I don't. I just drop them off. I just transport. I just drop them off, unhitch them, and drive off and get the other one. Quite a burgeoning industry, I guess. His, uh, Actually, any... a lot of people live in trailer homes. I got a question. Yeah. Have you ever had anyone buy those house, uh, one of those homes that had teeth? Uh, I'm no, I don't know. I'm not into sales. We oh, okay. all walks of life. All right. All right. So you're driving around um, half a house uh-huh. for a living. Uh huh. And you can you can take up residence in in all different places around the country. Yeah. Well, I just stop in, tr- in truck parking or, or you know and get a hotel. But when I stop in Vegas, she doesn't trust me. She thinks I'm going to rent a whore or something. And you're just going to be there to drop a house off? Yeah. Well, I'm also going to stay you know a day or two you know to enjoy myself. But that's I'm not ridiculous. Gonna, I'm a man. I'm not going to I'm not going to pick up any. That is ridiculous. She will not trust you enough just to. I mean, well, if you wanted to go to Las Vegas, you go to Las I'm Vegas. I'm guessing Frank slipped up in the past. Yeah, I went there. I, I've went there before. This is before I even met her. And what I happened? I rented a whore when I went up. Oh, there. Okay. Now that I'm going back, she thinks I'm going to do it again. Uh. Well, let me tell you something, Frank. You shouldn't have told her about you picking up the hooker when you were in Vegas before. Yeah. You understand what that does to a woman? Oh, you're being honest. She told me what she did. <sighs> I told her what I did. Oh, you know, you're... I was trying. Is it, this is based on trust. You were being drunk. It was based on hops and barley, and it was a big mistake. No. You okay. know, I met her, in the, in the, you know, I met her, she was a, she was a, a topless dancer. And mm-hmm. I made her, I got, I took her away from all that. I've, I've made her what she is today. <laughs> <laughs> right, which is a pissed off housewife. No, no, no. I haven't hooked her up with a good job now, you know? All right. So she Frank, to flaunt herself. All right, Frank. She's well. a she's a little insecure, or you're not acting like the kind of person she can trust. It's one or the other. Well, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Now think think about the craziness here. She was a topless dancer. That already suggests some issues for her, right? Well, bottomless is worse, Frank, but yeah. okay. Frank goes in there, makes that his girlfriend. Suggests some issues, Adam. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, and then they then they have this craziness going back and forth between them, such that he can't be really out of her sight, and he can't uh, go certain places, and uh, she can't trust him. Now, now, indeed, he may not be trustworthy. Not to mention, but, Frank has a job where he drags around yeah. half a house. Yes, yeah, so there's yeah, a lot it's so going on. Trust, though, it's, it's, she doesn't trust me because I'm going to Las Vegas. She's never. She doesn't trust you else. because she I, has I, I been around people, people like you, I suppose, too. and she knows what you've done in the past, and she is for some reason you've given her very little reason to trust. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what I should do. What do you recommend? I, I would, cannot. If I if I tell her if I, she wants me to either quit this job or tell him I can't go to Vegas. You it's tell funny. her that dragging around uncompleted homes is your life. Ah, well. Why don't she life. take a couple of days off and meet you there? Ah, she can't do that. All right, listen, Frank. You need to look her in the eye. You need to hold her hand. You need to even uh, work up some sort of uh, false tear. Maybe uh, you know, cut an onion or something. <laughs> Oh, for Christ's sake, that <laughs> was Drew's. Uh, Drew's uh, pager was on buzz, and it just vibrated right off the table. And you need to tell her. Look her in the eye. Frank, no, we don't have enough time, but just tell me. Tell me for 10 seconds. Convince me. I'm her. Ready? You're going to Vegas. Go. Okay. I'm going to Vegas. <clears throat> Okay, oh, oh, you want me to tell you? No, that? we've had enough of that guy. He has to get a job where he drags, uh, drags around half a church. Mm-hmm. That's a little more respectable. Hmm. Yeah. You say so? Yeah, all right, true. Jeez. <sighs> Julie, 23, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. How you doing? Good. 
Good. I got this problem. I have an ex-husband, and I want to get back together with him. Why? Why? Because I still love him. How long have you been apart from him? Two years. Do you have kids? No. Why did you separate? Because we were so young when we got married, and I was just stupid. Does he still love you? Well, he's got a live-in girlfriend now. And does he have feelings for you? I don't know. You don't know. And have you been in contact with him over this course of this two years? Mm-hmm. And what does he tell you? Um, well, actually, we just talk as friends. We don't talk as lovers. Have you told him you intend to get involved or would wish to get involved? No. Julie. I, well, I seen him today. Just I went to his work, and I just went there just to torture myself. Uh, Julie. Yes. Now, how come, why aren't you stupid anymore? Because huh. I realized that I love him so much. Okay, so now you, you have a Ph.D. all of a sudden. <laughs> all right, Julie. Yes. You didn't do anything to betray him when you were together? I didn't. You didn't? I Well, no, I did everything in my power to push him away Uh huh. when we separated. Screw around with uh, any of his friends? No. Huh? No. Uh huh. But his friends? Well, okay. She screwed around now with his friends. How did no. you pick up on that? Because I know what women do when they say they they were stupid. Ah. Being stupid doesn't mean they they couldn't figure out uh, you know uh, uh, basic arithmetic right, or something right. like that. It means they were screwing around. Right. Right. So when guys are stupid, it means they they hit their thumb with a hammer or something. When a woman's stupid, it means she banged one of his friends. Ugh. No, not one of his friends. Uh. All right, guy he sort of knew from work. No, absolutely not. No one he knew. All right, but later he came to know him. No. No he, of him. He knew of him. Yes. Yes. That was after we were separated, though. Whatever. You, all right, but you betrayed him. Yes. Okay. So, so. Now you went back, and he's living with somebody. Yes. And I'm sure But he, he also told me that he could never love her the way he loved me. When did he say that? This was about a year ago. Mm. <sighs> So this, all right, uh, all right, Julie. Yes. Let me talk to him. I'll you talk. Want to talk to him. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm going to talk to him, Julie. Why? And I, I'll tell you why, even though it may be painful, it, it, it has a purpose. Because this is something that's uh, it's shrouding your life in in mystery. You're screwed up. You went over to his work today and, and practically stalked a guy. Right. No, I didn't stalk him. Oh, yes. I saw you lurking in the shadows. Yes. No, I went there for lunch with a friend. Oh, come on. You're beginning to stalk him. That's how stalking starts. Oh, no. Listen, okay, your ass may not have been stalking him, but your mind was. You know why you went over Probably. there. Okay. Yeah, just... All right. You're miserable. You're off balance. Yes, I can't have a relationship because you, I still love right. him. Right. You don't know which way is up. And here's what needs to happen. We need to figure this out. Either we need to get you guys back together or we need to pull the plug. And you need to have yourself a little mourning period and put it behind you. And then move on and then get with another guy and then um, do so screw problem, that relationship up too. Yeah. Well, my problem is is that I compare everyone to him, no matter who I date. Who I yeah. Date. And yeah. it never works out because mm. no yeah, one is as great as he did, is. Did you not, Adam, did you not do the exact same thing with somebody once? Yeah, there's this dude named... Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, oh, chick? Yeah, I did it with a chick, too. And what happened when you went back? <sighs> when I went back with her? Yeah, after after not being able to conduct any other relationships, after pining over her for an extended period of time, you got back with her. Yeah, and I... Uh, well, it took me about a week before I got back to whatever behavior it is drove her off in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, didn't you say this earlier? <laughs> hey, Julie? Yeah? D don't Don't crack wise to me. Uh-huh. All right, Julie, listen. I don't remember you saying it. I don't either, but Julie. Okay. We're going to put you on hold. Okay. We're going to get this guy's phone number. Okay. I'm going to talk to him as only I can. Okay. And we're going to find out some answers. Okay. And we're going to get to the bottom of this. Do you understand? All righty. Now, I don't want you to wuss out on me. No, I'm not going to wuss out. Because you need to know the truth. Okay. And we need to bring this to some... We need, we need some closure. You need closure in your life. You have no closure. No clothes. <laughs> Do you understand? I understand. And if the answer is no, and I will not let him go unless the answer is no or until the answer is no. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, then it's no. Do you understand? Sometimes no means no, even with guys. Yes. All right? All right. And then you're free to move on. Okay. And maybe you could start worshiping me. 
<laughs> Only if you're lucky. <laughs> You don't sound like such a prize, Julie. But we're gonna what? put you, uh, we're gonna oh, put you on hold. On. All right, right all right. Relax over there. We're putting you on hold. What's his name? Gary. Gary. Jerry. All right, Jerry. Yeah. All right, Julie's on hold, and we'll be back to talk to Jerry. Hi, this is Barry White. You're listening to Love Line. Oh, I bet that guy belches and women's nipples stand up. And let me tell you something that's really the beautiful thing about being a man. Because Barry White, not the best looking guy in the world. I mean, you know, he's a, like a big dude. Mm-hmm. And he's not bad looking. He's got kind of the relaxed Jerry Curl thing going on and the beard and everything. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't want to call the guy ugly, but, you know, he's, he's no uh, Lorenzo Lamas, you know. Or uh, I'll pick a black guy, uh, Denzel Washington. Hi, this is Barry White. (laughs) But he's got that goddamn voice. And I'll bet you he gets more women you can shake a stick at with that voice. What do you tell us? He's got 15 kids or something? 13 kids? Something like that. Oh, really? Just dozens of kids. He didn't didn't name them all Barry, did he? No. Okay, good. Oh, Ann's giving me a what look. I I was thinking of... Why would he call them all Barry? Well, because... uh, uh, I'm trying to yeah. think. George Frazier. Oh, I mean, George, uh, George Foreman. Foreman named yeah. all his kids, has like 15 kids, and named them all George. So what would be the... Why both, would you connect those two? Both ones? big black guys. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I see. That's the connection. Oh, don't oh, play stupid wow. over there. Oh, get back over oh, there. Please. Get back over yeah. there. Oh, color your hair. <laughs> let's get on <laughs> with the so show. You're so pathetic. You go for like the weakest comeback there. <laughs> Come on, let's go. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. I'm Adam Crowley, he's Doctor Drew, and this is Jeff Twenty. Hey, how you doing? Good. Guys, I got a uh, question for Drew, and the problem actually pertains to you, Adam. Mm hmm. Okay, my uh, we were down at Edge Fest down on Memorial Weekend up in uh, Cumberland, Wisconsin, with you. Absolutely, absolutely. Great show, by the way. That was a great time we had. But my roommate happened to uh, line up with, I guess, the wrong little girl, and she gave him a little creepy crawlies. Right. The crabbies. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just kind of worried about, you know, I, he's my roommate, you know, just roommate thing, but is there stuff around the house that I can get, like, just from him having the crabbies that I can, uh, I can yes. hook up with them? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Adam, you said that with terrific authority. I certainly did. Is there a story attached to that? Uh, there was almost a story attached to it. One of my roommates uh, came down with the crabbies, mm-hmm. and really? uh, and we used to live in a one-bedroom, and this guy worked the graveyard shift, and we had the same bed. Oh, what? Oh, well, I don't have to worry about that part. And That's I, incredible. Uh, I was just... Uh, it's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or something. <laughs> Well, it was more like Adam in the crab hole, but <laughs> all right. And I, sw- I knew I was going to, I was like, he found out, you know, naturally. And then, you know, took a sweet time about telling me about it. And I was like, oh, my God, I got, you know, naturally I started itching my, my yes. nuts off the right. second I heard he had them. Right. Well, that's exactly pretty much what I'm doing right now. But, and, but you could have, Adam could have contracted it in that way because, indeed, the bed sheets, the bed clothes, right. linens can harbor these little critters. Absolutely. It's the harbor for the crabs. And so when you are, tre- when somebody's treated, they usually recommend that you vacuum and that you clean all, you walk. Wash everything simultaneously, right? And uh, like the couch could be totally infested yeah, and everything. Right it's now. hard to do the couch, but there is such a thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never did get them. Somehow, I must have some sort of uh, <laughs> uh, crab impervious uh, junk or something. It's it's, uh, it's not terribly likely to get to be transmitted. That way. It's not as contagious as uh, say human lice, plain lice. All right. Well, anyway, but we, this this is the crab I did some extensive experimentation on, by the way. We did find one of the critters. Oh, really? We put it on the little bathroom counter on the tile. I told this story how, before. How, how old oh, yeah. were you when you did this? I was in my early 30s. No, you were not. No, I was I was like uh, I was like 19. Yeah, it sounds like I'm 19. And oh, believe me, I'd do it now. Uh, of course. Except for now, I would torture it first, and then you know what I would do now? <laughs> Actually, I would tag it and, 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 and chart its migration. Little radioactive tags. Understand kind. the crab, then you can an- annihilate it. But I took this little crab off. There it was. Ching, ching, ching. See, see what I'm doing with my yeah. fingers? Ching, they move ching, very ching. slowly. Little crabby. And yeah, well, where's it going? It's just got your nuts. <laughs> this is no hurry. This part of your nuts just good as that part of your nuts. So, <laughs> your nuts aren't that big, even for something small. Moving that slow. Yeah, the one of mine's a little bit lower. But here's the deal. This little crab, we put it on the counter, the bathroom, on the tile. 
And yeah. I said, and I said, listen. And he said, uh, nothing will kill this crab. And I said, absolutely not. I'll tell you what will kill it, which kills everything, by the way, is ammonia. Yeah. You ever take a whiff of ammonia? Yeah. Knock oh, yeah. you out. Yeah. You take ammonia, put it in a squirt bottle, you spray it on a cockroach, the thing will turn over and die. Dead in its tracks, faster than Raid or yeah. any of that junk. Took ammonia, took it in a little capful, dropped it on, made a whole bubble of ammonia on this little crab. And he kept moving. Walked right through it, left a little trail of ammonia. I think it, like, flipped me like a, <laughs> like a, like a, a pincher or something and just kept going. So nothing will kill this except for that, uh, what is that stuff? R- a- quell. Quell? Quell. Well, he's already got the stuff. rid. Rid's fine. There's other stuff out there now. Uh, but any other scientific experiments you've conducted in your life you'd like to share with us, Adam? I'm really quite fascinated by the behavior. I do have a uh, active uh, yeast culture uh, in my uh, kitchen cabinet that uh, I'm working on, but I, uh, I, I don't want to talk about it until uh, it's a double blind thing. I see. <laughs> so the we yeast have might to, like, find out. Get the whole place now, or what? Well, no, wash everything and have him re reapply the red. Well, he already did one of the uh, things that I heard you guys not recommend. What? He, Shave. He took the old bick to himself. Oh my god. Well, it couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. You can see the crabs better. All right, Jeff. You, you're you're done with us, I think. You, you know what you need to do. All, all right. right. Okay. So as long as uh, so probably I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're fine. <sighs> Go back to this. Uh huh. Uh huh. And read this. No, I did. Julie. Yeah. Hey. Here. Hey. Hey. Julie. Uh, Julie's 23. Julie wanted to reunite with her husband because she was really stupid a few years ago when they were married, and now she's uh, Copernicus. <laughs> Yeah, you could say that. All right. So we tried calling him during the commercial, and according to the note I just had handed to me, he was really unreceptive and hung up on the beautiful Sherry. I would suspect that's not a good sign. No, it's not. All right. So, Julie. Mm Mm-hmm. You may have made a mistake. You may have screwed up. People screw up all the time in relationships. Or she may be making this out to be more than it actually was. Probably. But let's just go the screw-up route because I feel more comfortable with that. That way I get to beat her up a little bit. But I'm going to build you back up when I'm done tearing you down, Julie. Oh, I thank you. You screwed up. You were young. You you got married too young. You were stupid. You were naive. And you made a few mistakes. Okay? Now it's time to move on. You have... you, You do not... You no longer have a chance with this guy, Jerry. But you will move on to someone else. You will not have the baggage. You will not have the history with this new person. You will start clean. It will be a it will be a clean slate. You'll start fresh, and you'll not make the same mistakes. It, at least uh, for a good six months. Okay, Julie. Okay. Stop comparing everyone to him. He's not that great. And he's not uh, he's not even a possibility anymore. That's right. He's out of the picture. Kristen, six. Oh, oh read that. No? Leva. What, what, what? All right. Kristen, 16, you're on Loveline. Um, hi. Okay. Actually, what are I, you doing over there, Drew? I, I wondered if the, if the screeners had found out that he had said that she was starting to stalk him or abuse him in some way. Or, or you know. His... No, I didn't get any of that. Okay. Kristen. Wait, wait, wait. Here comes Sherry on the phone. All right. Wait a minute. Oh, I was just going to tell you that he had said, Jerry, um, this Julie's, was... Julie's husband, had said that he was becoming an irritation. She is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he didn't say her. He said it. Quote, unquote. So, that's it. Is he talking about her private parts? What is it? Oh, just the whole scene. Mm-hmm. Okay. Julie, if you can hear me, he's living with someone he likes more than you, and he'd like you to be happy and move on. Kristen, mm-hmm. now you're 16. Mm-hmm. Now you're on Loveline. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, I have more of a question. than oh, I don't know. It might be a problem. I don't know. Um, I want to know if it's, I don't know, I guess unhealthy. To be obsessed with somebody who's dead. Absolutely not, Adam. I um, I have a love for uh, Vincent Price. Mm. Is he alive? No. Okay. What kind of obsession? Like um, the person is Kurt Cobain. Mm-hmm. And I liked him before he died. He was like always. Ever since like ever since like Nevermind came out, he was my favorite forever. You know. Mm-hmm. And um. Now that he's, like, gone, I I don't know. I guess I just, like, started getting more of his stuff. Like, right now, I'm, like, sitting in my room, and I can't even count how many Nirvana posters. And well, Is it is it 
have anything to do with the fact that he's dead, or is it just he is somebody, his I, image and his uh, persona is somebody you're obsessed with? I think, I don't know, because I, I didn't, like, have anything of him. I had his CDs yeah. when he was, like, alive, you know? I had his CDs. I watched his videos, you know? But now that he's, like, dead, everybody's all, oh, yeah, you're obsessed with Kurt Cobain. All right, all right. What, what, do, you, do you associate it with something to do with his death? Mm, I, I don't know. I if he was alive, you'd be equally into him. I think so. I don't I don't know. I think so. And to that, if, if that is the case, if our assumptions are correct, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's normal for a 16 year old to do this kind of thing to sort of create bigger than life figures that they want to focus on and sort of have a fantasy relationship with. I like. I don't know. I've like gone as far as to go to people who like can contact the dead. Yeah. Okay. Now you're getting a little scary. And like I I've paid like money. <laughs> For people to like contact him and stuff. Okay. You, you and, you know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm getting Kurt. I know Kurt's coming to me. <laughs> you didn't know I could channel. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I'll tell her. Okay. C Kristen. Uh huh. Kurt, tell you to leave his ass alone. You don't understand. He told me that ten seconds ago. He said he's tired of you worshiping him. So they take the damn posters down and put up uh, someone who's living. No, I, I. That's what he said. I have Courtney Love all over the place too. I'm so in love with her. Wait a minute, he's coming back again. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want her poster up. I really love Courtney Love, though. I would like marry. You don't understand. I would marry her. Right. Your right. original question was: Is this healthy? No, it's not particularly healthy, particularly the, the extremes that you're taking. It was but cute it, two and a half minutes ago. Now it's getting a little sick. But it is not uh, unusual, I, and uh, hopefully you'll kind of create more productive uh, relationships in, in reality in I, your life. It doesn't seem like I, I don't know, my mom just says, like, one day you're going to have no place to put all your Nirvana stuff because you're never, in all your whole stuff, you're not going to want it anymore. I, I just think I'll, like, always, always want it around. You know? No, you'll not, unfortunately. Here's what happens. It's the beauty of life. You get a little older, you don't care. It's 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 really the great part of life. Like remember when you were like when you're like eight years old and you shook a uh, a signpost on a street corner and a little chick fell out and died there because there's birds nesting up there and you had bad dreams about it and you maybe you cried and you tried to save it and you felt really weird for a long time. Now you're driving home. Man, you run over like uh, an endangered species. I mean, you run over like I hit like a like a blue whale on the way home. I didn't even care. You just don't care. You you turn on the TV. Hey, seven million people died in Bangladesh because uh, the Union Carbide factory went up in smoke. And you're like, hey, that's rough. Hey, look at uh, Nomo. He pitched another shutout. Fantastic. That's what happens. It's a sad fact of life, but isn't it true? You just kind of move on, and yeah. you just worry about your own kids eventually, uh, uh, and then you, know. you start worrying about your prostate. Yeah. Isn't that how life goes? Well, you, you worry about getting fat somewhere in there, too. Yeah, you care about different things and not with the same intensity, that's for sure. Right, and then you care too much about yourself, and then you become a big a-hole. <laughs> Is that what happens, Drew? Yeah, what phase are you in? <laughs> I'm in the a-hole phase. Yeah. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician. <clears throat> I swallowed some of my own spit there. All right, ready to get back to the phones there, Drew? Yeah. Adam West tomorrow night, everyone. Jennifer, 15, you're on Loveline. Yeah, I have a problem. My yeah. mom forbade me to see my boyfriend because she said he's too old. Uh-huh. How old are you? 15, he's 19. He is too old. He, he's he's not too old in general. He's just too old for you. No, well, yeah, I guess that's what my mom thinks. She thinks that all he wants is sex, and that's Adam. Not even, that's mm -hmm. not even happening. Uh, I, well, I'll take it a step further. He only wants sex from you and your mom. <laughs> I think he wants to be your ma too. I highly doubt that. <laughs> uh, how long have you gone out with him? I haven't gone out with him for a month, but I've known him for like two years. How do you know him? We've been really close friends. How do you know him? How did you meet him? What's that? How did you meet him? Uh, he was in one of my classes last year. All right, wait a minute. This, this, this static is driving me nuts. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. He was in one of her classes last yeah, year. Yeah, I want to get more about that. Were they, he, she would have been last 14. Year. She would have been 14 and 18. So 18. Wh what kind of school is this? Right. And what kind of class is this? And what kind of tart is he if he's in a class with ninth graders as a senior? 
<laughs> Wait a minute. I'm trying to think if I took any classes in ninth grade. So I think there's a few in my ceramics class. Yeah, oh, say, thank maybe, God. Maybe it's ceramics. Thank God I took that ceramics class. <laughs> Idiots. What were they thinking over there at school? Hey, you have to declare a major. Uh, how about clay? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back to Jennifer. Jennifer? Yes. Okay, speak slowly. Oh, for, you there? Yeah. Okay, what class was it? It was biology. Biology. Biology one. Biology one. You were in ninth grade. He was a senior. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Back to your original question. So you didn't dissect this guy, did you? <laughs> no. Okay, because he, he sounds like more of a more of a specimen than he does an actual student. So, Jennifer, the guy. Now, what's he doing now? Uh, he lives at home with his mom. Uh huh. He has a job. Uh huh. And that's all he does. Thinking about junior college, perhaps. What's that? Thinking about junior college, is he? No. Uh huh. Where does he work? He works at Kmart. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you. There's more. Uh, there's there's prices are dropping there, and his IQ. Jennifer. <gasps> yes. The the guy's too old and too dumb. No. Yes. No. Yes, yes. He's he's known in the name. If in in if he was a Indian, he would be uh, uh, dances with morons. Hello. Uh oh. Mom. Mom. No, my phone just hung up. Okay. Messed up. All right, listen. Too old for you. Well, okay. Say I don't think he's too old for me. How should I handle this with my mom? I mean, what should I say to my mom? What? You, you got to lie. I got to lie. No, she. All right. This is That's this all. is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. This is like. Uh, in Green Acres, when Eddie Albert would have to like uh, climb the the pole to use the phone, I've I've never seen such a su- such a disintegration of technology in my entire life. She she had like five bad things going on with that phone. All right, so anyway, he's nineteen, she's fifteen. That's a deal breaker. I mean, it, it, again, I, we, I can't say that categorically, but it it is is awfully worrisome. And again, people, you have to worry about the nineteen year old. You know, what, what his whole deal is and, and whether or not he'd be a good person for you if he's dating somebody that much younger. Well, I he's think we know what his life. deal was, is he was in beginning biology when he was 18. Yeah, yeah. And, and he works in Kmart. And, uh, and, <laughs> and thank goodness that she's not having a physical relationship with him and that she's at least being very smart that way. So. I failed biology. Do you understand that? I can imagine that. I failed and never missed a day. Yeah. Just failed. Oh, well, when I, a quick, a quick. Uh, you, you, this might surprise you, Adam. But there's a lot more to the scholastic experience than attendance in a classroom. I know, but I thought they're supposed to give you uh, no. at least a passing no. grade for no. showing up. No. Well, all the people that cut got to fail too. I never, I didn't even have to show up. And let me just give a quick shout out. Hey, uh, Mr. Dillaberti, kiss my ass. He's on my ass kiss list too. He was my biology. What was your favorite teacher. part of the biology class? Bad rug. That what was guy. Your favorite part. The part where they show no, the no. films yeah. of, like, uh, worms humping. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I could figure out. Rob, 26, you're on Loveline. Um, hi. Hey. Love your show. Thank you. <laughs> I have a kind of a problem. This may be more for uh, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Uh, what is sex addiction? And uh, if so, maybe uh, could you, if I tell you a little bit about myself, could uh, you well, tell me if I am one? I, I, the, the addiction, the, the definition is perhaps somewhat loosely applied, and... Uh, I'm not so sure there's a real consensus about it, but as I conceptualize it, it's basically ongoing and probably progressive acting out sexually despite adverse consequences. And it is usually, to my estimation, in in the setting of other forms of addiction. Uh, and I, and I, would, I would hesitate to make the, the def, to define somebody as truly a sex addict if they have not a history of addiction to something else. Uh, I mean, Rob, I'm, Rob, I'm probably an alcoholic. Probably. Rob, you are an alcoholic? Oh, probably. Probably yeah. are. Was your yeah. grandfather a sexaholic? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They even said he may have molested people, but I, I, I don't know if that makes any difference. Very nice. But, you know, back then it was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. Hey, grandpa's molesting someone. Hey, <laughs> that's cute. Hey, Rob. Yeah. What are you doing? How's it manifesting itself? Well, I I work kind of like a well, I work in a restaurant, I'm a bartender, and uh, I have a girlfriend. I live with her, and uh, I believe I love her, but I can I find it hard to believe because I cheat on her. Mm-hmm. With um, some of the uh, patrons of the restaurant. Patrons or friends f- from other restaurants who we go hang out together. Uh, uh, people who work in the restaurant. 
it just happens too much. The guy who comes in and cleans the flu every uh, once a month. So you're basically cheating with everyone. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. But that's not really... It, see, to me, that doesn't seem like a sexual addiction as much as it is a sort of thrill addiction or a cheating addiction that, that thrill, or an it, intimacy, a problem with intimacy. Because right. to me, if you have a sexual addiction, you're finding someone who's stupid enough to let you, you know, jump on them, and then you're jumping on them as much as possible all the time. No, the sex addiction is about thrill and anger and those sorts of feelings. Right. It, it really is. If but somebody's an let's call it a thrill and anger addiction. Well, there's something to that. Hey, Rob. I think that's what it is. Rob. Yeah. Do you... So, so what I'm saying is, is it's not the sex itself, but it's the fact that you may get caught, and that there's some danger and some intrigue involved with this. Yeah. Am I right? I mean, I came in at 5 o'clock last night. I had no defense at all. Right, right. You do stuff. You, you almost set yourself up to get caught, don't you? Yeah. Are, are, do you ever do it with, like, married women whose husbands may be home any minute? I have. Okay. When I was in the Army. <laughs> okay. What is it about guys joining the army? All of a sudden, they're off. I, I already, I was already in the army. Did four years. Okay. All right. So listen, you have some kind of thrill seeking. Actually, what it is is it's sort of like a self destructive thing, isn't it, Drew? Yeah. Yeah. I think it is too. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's there's a lot. It's like ways to get help or. Uh, well, there's a lot going on, Rob. I mean, you can you can if you are inclined, go investigate essay Sex Anonymous, Sex Addicts Anonymous. Should I do my F and A joke eight times again, Drew, no, so you don't get you, it? Please, no. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know th- that I think you would be benefited from some of the. It sounds like you'd be benefited from some of the the, the way they approach this problem. Um, but there may indeed maybe a lot of other stuff going on psychologically for you. Matt, seventeen, you're on Love Line. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Okay. Um, gosh, this is weird. About a year ago, I uh, I went out with this girl and uh, you know just you know kind of seeing her and uh, she fooled around with my uh, best friend and uh, they didn't exactly tell me for like a week and then uh, when she did tell tell me she just kind of like pretty much dumped me for him and uh, you know it kind of like destroyed my self esteem for a while and uh, I've been trying to get back up on it but uh, like scared to death of girls now just you know simply because uh, uh, it. it I just have a hard time talking to them, relating, and I, I get really nervous and tense. And right, yeah, I don't know what to do. Mm. I, I just, I, I want to start. Dating. This, this was your first uh, real relationship? No. Um, well, I, I, you know, a while ago, I had, a, I've had a couple other serious ones, but this one just really screwed me over. I mean, I, you know, she slept with him, and but the other one ended up. The other ones were okay. Um, for the most part, yeah, they ended just mutually. Everything. How long ago did this thing end? She, um, uh, m- my ex slept with my best friend. They didn't tell me for a week. She then dumped me for him. How long ago? Uh, about a year, a little over a year ago. A year ago. Okay. Wow. All right, Matt. Yeah. We don't blame you. It's tough. I mean, and that's the way the, uh, the brain works, and the brain's right. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have time to make sense of everything. It's like you almost drown in a pool when you're three. You're scared of water. Your brain does that. Your brain, your brain goes, hey, you almost died last time you got near a body of water. I'm going to keep you away from it by freaking you out every time someone turns the sprinklers on. <laughs> Sometimes the brain overdoes it a little bit and ends up screwing you up. But in general, it's sort of right. And, and th- that's the cruel way the mind works. So... No, I'm not faulting you for this, but you got to understand realistically that all women do not cheat on you with your best friend. I, it's a good 65 percent, in my opinion, but it's not all of them. And there are plenty of them out there that will uh, that will be nothing but good to you, Matt. That will uh, worship you like the uh, mediocre high school student that you are. So I think you're telling him basically to keep putting himself out there cautiously. That's but- right, and and you, you got to learn. And here's what you got to do. Here's the overall message. Here it is. <laughs> Mike, engineer Mike loves me because I always get in my message riff about 30 seconds after we're supposed to go to spots. But mm-hmm. here it is. And this is for everyone in every walk of life, whether it's going out for a job, whether it's going out for the team, whether it's going out for a girl or for a guy or whatever it is. You've got to figure out eventually that you're the only one that can really screw up your own crap. I mean, you're the only one who can really do a ton of damage to you. Other people, eh, they only screw you up as, as, for as much power as you give them. Right. Meaning you can go out with whoever and they can do whatever. But 
ultimately it's you who ends up torturing yourself, who ends up eating too much, who ends up killing yourself, or who ends up you know, losing your job or spiraling down into alcoholism. It's you. It's always you. And if you can get yourself together enough, then you're free to go do anything you want. Go apply for any job you want. Go ask any girl out. Go ask any guy out. Because they're only going to be able to do so much damage to you. You can take care of yourself. Mm. Am I right, Drew? You're right. Thank you. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Tomorrow night... Adam West, who I have had some limited experience with and I know to be a fun guy. And uh, also, Burt Ward, who played Robin, who now basically is uh, could not squeeze his ass into those tights. <laughs> He's been on Loveline, by the way. Spatula and a uh, handful of, uh, of bacon grease now. He's a big man now. Oh, yes, he is. Uh, he wrote that book. I know. He wrote this sort of tell-all book. Uh, it came out, I guess, about a year, a year and a half ago. Yeah. And he's basically saying that like him and Adam were just banging groupies in, in the trailer. And Adam was telling them to take a ride on the bat pole. And and they had to like uh, you know duct tape his junk down because it was protruding too much out of his uh, underoos or whatever his, his costume was. And... It really sounds to me like the guy's just a madman. <laughs> I mean, it really sounds like he, he, like a, like a, like a hydraulic hose came loose in his head and was just swinging around, like you see in those industrial movies sometimes. But I don't know. Maybe some of it's true. So you can bet I'm going to act like it's true, and we'll we'll ask Adam tomorrow night, and we'll be back in ten. Well, more love line. Drew, you ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to clue yeah. everybody into the heated discussion we were having off the air? Oh, yeah. Drew was saying that um, he liked big nipples. No, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I gave my little um, my little uh, summary uh, of the last call. Your about self-help summary. Five minutes ago by yeah. basically telling people they had to, if they got their act together, then they could venture out into the world and not worry so much. Because we get all those calls about people saying, I don't know, you know, I can't love again or I can't give myself away again because this may happen and they may do that and they may do this. And I, and I basically said, listen, get your own crap together and then don't worry so much about what other people are going to do to you because you realize they, they don't they don't have as much power as you thought, only right. about as much as you give them. Right. And Drew countered during the commercial, because that's good radio, <laughs> with, what was it, Drew? Well, that, that, that sort of self-help message that was so prominent in the 70s and 80s uh, really left out an important piece. And that is that in order for you to improve to the point that you don't need other people, or you don't, aren't affected in the same way by other people or, or traumatized by other people or open to that, is you have to sort of develop with the help of other people. You need other people. You can't, you can't read self-help books and develop automatically. You need – humans don't do that. They need another person to sort of nurture and help them develop. Right. Just as if you were – because part, the emotional parts of ourselves are very delicate. And uh, just as if you were a child, those parts that need to be developed need that kind of support. I will agree with that wholeheartedly. And speaking in the 70s, wasn't that uh, about the time you took that um, – <laughs> class portrait of yes. yours with uh, your collar yes. in two different time zones. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When I was 19, I ate about four boiled peyote buttons and stayed up all night but felt no effect. And I think your barber ate four boiled peyote <laughs> buttons. Oh, God, you got to see. Everyone's got to see Drew in that picture. It's it's. There's worse out there. Tremendous. Oh, there is? Oh, yeah. Oh, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, keeper of bad pictures, please fax those. Come forward with those. Of, oh, yeah. uh, all, all yearbook pictures. Of Drew, all, all hideous. Of Drew only. Please. So, Cindy, 16, you're on Love Line. It's Wendy. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Okay, um, here's the thing. It's my ex-boyfriend. Um, we went out about a year ago, and then in, like, January of this year, we didn't really start seeing each other. Um, we smoked out together. You, you then, smoked uh, out together? Yeah. Okay. On pot. Yeah. And um, I don't really remember that night. And then the next day, he told me that we ended up sleeping together, and I was still a virgin. You were just smoking pot? Yeah. But I don't remember really anything. Hmm. And he told me that we slept together. And I believed him all this time until I was talking to my best friend. I didn't tell anybody about this until, like, just probably two weeks ago. 
And I told her, and she said, no, you would have remembered something. You would have been able to feel it like the next morning or something. You would have been, you know, sore. You, you would expect that. And it, it's awfully unusual to be amnestic from marijuana. I mean, it can happen, but that's unusual. And so I was like, I don't know if I should confront him or not or what, because he's been telling, you know, he's been saying that, you know, that we did. And the, But the thing is that his parents and my parents are like best friends. Uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, Wendy. Or Wendy. Uh well, here, he, okay, this guy's guilty. Of something. He, he's guilty any way you slice it, because either he got you loaded or high and pulled your panties down and had sex with you, or he got you loaded and high and said he pulled your panties down and had sex with you. Either way, he's an a-hole. Yeah. And he's a bigger a-hole if he raped you, obviously. But there's still a sort of sickness to saying you did it in in, 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 in in a way even worse in a sort of deranged kind of way because there's nothing in it for you i mean at least you can go okay the guy was high as a kite you were high as a kite he's 16 his hormones were popping he had a, a, a boner that could cut glass and, and and he went nuts and he jumped on top of you mm-hmm. and i don't condone it but i'm just saying it, you, you can see the retarded logic in it yeah, yeah. saying he slept with you it's just bs yeah so what should she do I would despise him either way. But should I, like, confirm him about it? Because I don't know. What would that accomplish? I have no idea. Like- well, she wants to know if she's a virgin or not. That's pretty much the thing right there. All right. Mm. Well, listen. I'll tell you what. Let's talk to him. No. I, I- can't. Because his parents and my parents are best friends. I can't. Well, I'm not talking to his mom. I'm talking to him. I can't. I can't do that, though. Okay. All right. And you want me to uh, bestow your uh, restore your virginity? I don't think he can do that because I, I just I don't know if I should confront him about it or what because I don't know if I am. That's what's bugging me. All right. I, w- I, all right. I would confront him. I would go the Drew and the friend route, which is if, if this guy actually had sex with you, you would probably have some recollection of it. And at least on sort of a physical level, the feeling, you, right, you, you would be aware, you, of yeah, aware of it. something. So you don't think that I did that? I don't think so, but we but can't... See, I don't understand why he would be saying that if I didn't. Okay. Well, because he's he's probably bragging about it. <clears throat> Who knows what's going on in this twisted F's mind? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay? The guy's an idiot. Okay. Are you done with him? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not even really talking to him anymore except for when we all get together as a family. Oh, all right. beautiful. All right. You're done with the guy, and if I were you, I would just chalk it up. To, the guy got stoned and he lied. And what's even worse is that our parents never knew we went out a year ago. All right. Well, this is just one of those crappy adolescent experiences that you can just heap it on all the other crappy adolescent experiences. And then go ahead. confront him and, like, talk to him about it or what? Yes. I would. Okay. I would. You know what I would tell him, quite frankly? I would say, listen, what you did to me is uh, is Rape. rape. If and, you really uh, did it. And no, no, I would just say, "Hey, you did it." And that's rape, and you know, I've been thinking about it. And I I uh, here's where you lie. I spoke to a uh, crisis counselor about it because I was very upset about it. She said it was rape, and I'm going in to do some paperwork tomorrow. <laughs> See how fast this guy confesses that he was lying. <laughs> great good idea. In which case, he's going to confess anyway whether he, he lied or not. So it's not the greatest idea, but uh I'll take credit for it anyway. Sean 19, you're on Loveline. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. <laughs> um, I had a question. Uh, probably Drew could answer it better. Or uh, oh, come, I can't answer anything. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, it's about Depa Provera. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, my girlfriend's on it, and um, she uh, just a couple days ago she started leaking milk, <laughs> and so. Um, that kind of stressed us out a little bit, but um, is she on any other medications? No, no, not at all. Leaking um, milk is kind of funny. I'm picturing like a, a dairy tanker or something. <laughs> um, we went ahead and got a pregnancy test. Right, very, very smart. Ooh. And it turned up negative. Mm-hmm. How long? I'm just wondering um, if there's anything I should be worrying about. I mean, is I mean, I, I. I'm pretty sure this isn't very common. Right. I I, I have not administered a lot of Depo-Provera, but I've never heard of that side effect from it. I, I don't really, it doesn't make immediate sense to me how that would happen as a side effect. We just uh, got a baby kitten, so... <laughs> no, that would have nothing to do with it either. Really? Um, 
However, there there are certainly plenty of other reasons that a woman can have that problem, uh, not the least of which is pregnancy. Hold and on. You, uh, I want to know where should... Sean was going with the baby kitten scenario. <laughs> Oh, well, she, she's been pregnant before, and she said that when she was pregnant before, she didn't start leaking milk until seven months. And um, she said any time that she was around children of any kind, she just started leaking like crazy. I, I got that same thing. And, and the kitten? Well, I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I, <laughs> I'm still I, trying to figure that one out. <laughs> All right, Sean. Uh, Again, uh, pregnancy issue, you should recheck the pregnancy test in a couple of weeks because that would probably be the most common reason in spite of her history of having you know, not, not produced any milk too late in the pregnancy. Uh, medication caused this. Thyroid disorders caused this. Tumors of the pituitary gland can cause this. Oh. So she ought, to, she ought to get checked out if none of the preliminary stuff turns out to be the case. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. John, 20, you're on Love Line. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good. Okay, check this out. Uh, my girlfriend, who I've been going out with almost two years, she goes to a baseball game with her ex-boyfriend, uh, but she went out with, like, about a couple years ago. And they start talking on the way back and about the relationship and stuff. And when she drops him off, I guess, you know, it's one of those sad things, and they kiss a little. And today she tells me about, like, you know, whatever happened last night, and she kind of avoids the kissing thing, but I'm waiting for that. So I asked her, I was like... How did you know about it? I didn't know. She was starting to tell me, she's like, uh, yeah, I went on with Malcolm, and I, you know, uh, you know, like, we had fun at the baseball game, but it was on the way back. We talked about a relationship. So she told me about that, but I kind of had this feeling, because she, you know, she, she's always talking about him, because that was his first, her first love, mm. yeah. and she's my first love. Oh. So wait a minute. That, all right. So your first love had another first love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Malcolm, the guy who wears the turtleneck sweaters. No. Yeah, no. believe me, I know this Malcolm. No, he's uh, a, he's a he's a he's a basketball player. Oh, yes, and they can't wear turtlenecks. Their no. necks don't get cold. Yeah, maybe they can. Yeah. I know this Malcolm. Okay. I don't trust anyone named Malcolm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I asked her. I was like, "So did you kiss him?" And she kind of lightly says, "No, he kissed me." And my heart just dropped, basically. Uh-huh. And she's like, you know, I thought you'd take it. I don't know. How, I, I was like, why didn't you tell me? And she goes, I don't know how you're going to take it. I'm like, I kind of knew it. I was just waiting for you to say it to me. You know? Yeah. And, uh, John, let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Why did her and Malcolm break up? Um, I guess um, I guess he had feelings for another woman. But, oh, okay. But oh, he, that's it. He didn't cheat on her. He. he I don't care. Yeah. You're screwed. <laughs> oh, all right. Listen, John, here's the deal. Men and women are both guilty of this. I I think women are even worse than men mm-hmm. in this department, which is when they get uh, jilted mm-hmm. that way, when they get dumped on by someone they're into, it just never let it die. Mm. I mean, if they had, if she had dumped him, mm-hmm. she would be all yours. See, but he she's... dumped her, he fell in love with someone else, and he moved on, and that goes under her book, in her book, as unfinished business. There right. is a, there's a score to settle. They have to finish this off. It is unfinished because she didn't do the dumping. Right. She got dumped. And, and guys are guilty of this, too, but... I've been dumped so many times that after a while, it's like I can't go back and, and look up everyone. It's just not enough. There's not enough months in the year. Mm-hmm. I don't even know where to start anymore. Plus, I'd have to go fly back to England and all over the country, and people are married now. I just accept the fact that I've been dumped, and that's fine. Right. Yeah, after a while, you start to enjoy it, actually. <laughs> See, this is what happened. Um, uh, I guess she's saying that... Um this is a kind of a way to end it because they talked about everything. And no, 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 no. But, okay, this is this is the thing. She says that oh, it lasted more. It just lasted a second. It wasn't like a peck and go thing, but it was a it was kind of like a slow kiss. But it yeah. wasn't like a Look, passionate one. It was just like a a second line. Like Cupid does not own a stopwatch, John. Yeah, and see, that, it does not matter how long the kiss went on. They kissed and they knew what they were they meant when they kissed. That's the important part. You can see this is the reason she gave me was. That it was kind of an ending thing. Yeah. No, 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 no. Then she's telling me. Listen, because, you end a relationship with a boot in the ass, not a peck on the lips. Right. All right. But this isn't. No, this is last night. This is like ending. Or this is. All right. Listen, I've had enough of John. 
the deal with John, and you could hear John. He was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was he he was like defensive. He was like being thrown out of a club. You know, wait, wait, wait! I know the guy, one of the bass players, buddy. My no, she's into this Malcolm. She has not let go of Malcolm because probably she probably wasn't that into Malcolm, but it was her first guy, and Malcolm got tired of her and moved on. And she's not going to forget this, and she really makes no bones about letting John know that she's not done with Malcolm either. Mm. John's doing all the backpedaling and all that. He's going to talk his way right around this mm-hmm. one, but she's into Malcolm. Mm-hmm. And she goes out to uh, events with him and gives him a little kiss, and they, they, they uh, relive Every moment of their relationship on the ride back from the stadium. Ugh. Yeah, John's got to play a little hardball with this gal. John, if you have any nuts at all, you'll move on. And then if she wants you, she'll come back and get you. When Malcolm dumps her again. Well, we all know, though, the way to get this woman's love is to dump her. <laughs> Preemptive dump. Dump her first. She'll be yours forever. John, 17, you're on Love Line. Yeah, that would be me. Hi there. Hey. Uh, well, I heard you talking a little while earlier about how this this person who faxed in the picture of Dr. Drew was a saint. Yes, he's going to be knighted. Really? Yes. Well, thank you. (laughs) I I feel so glad that you guys have have responded to that. That was you? Yeah, that was me. Now, uh, John, where'd you get that? Well, I go to the same high school that Drew went to. Uh Uh-huh. And um, we have this board on a wall in a hallway. Right. You go to the uh, St. Academy's uh, School for Homos, still? (laughs) You could call it that, yeah. Um, And this this board has a list of ASB presidents, and Drew's name is on there for 1976. Drew? Um, So for fun, I went back into the yearbook archives, and I wanted to see what he looked like in 1976, and I came up with that. Wait a minute. ASB, Associated Student Body? That would be it, yeah. Drew, you were president? Would you believe it? With that haircut? (laughs) I thought you'd be impeached for sure with that part. Really? Well, Well, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, John. Yeah. What was there? How many kids? How many? How many other pussies were in that school beside you? Like three? Two hundred fifty. Two hundred and fifty. Well, now the student body is something like three hundred and sixty odd. How many palms did you have to grease to get that job? <laughs> Seriously. What? How many promises did you make? You're still paying people off, aren't you? Oh yeah. True. You were class president. <laughs> wow. Imagine that. What, what, what did you? What was your? What, what was your campaign? Bad? Uh, what'd you run on? Uh, big collars I, I, and bad I, I, parts I, I, for it, everyone. It, it must have been <laughs> a comb in every uh, garage and a chicken in every pot or something. <laughs> no, Drew, I didn't know that. Drew's very modest, very modest. John. Yeah. All right, did you say you were running or that you were uh, ASB, too? No, not at all. You know what you do? Wait, I got to John can fax us a picture. Go, yeah. into, go into the 1972 yearbook. 72. Four years earlier. Yeah. And look at the pictures of the freshman class. Okay. And, oh, <laughs> Adam, will, Adam will never get over it. Wait, That's... what? You want the one of you? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll see what I can do. All right, all right John. Yeah. John. Just, like, give me a day or two. All right. John, you must have... No, we want you to throw a, a chair through the window and break into the school tonight with a flashlight in your mouth, all right? Uh, Big David beat my ass. All right, John, so uh, you go to the school uh, for the privilege, for uh, the elite. No. Well, yeah. That, uh-huh. is, that is true. Uh-huh. That a lot is, of, yeah, that is true. A lot of ascots and smoking jackets. Everyone talks like they're in a uh, Grey Poupon, Dijon commercial. Yeah. Yeah, pretty close. All right. Make sure and uh, re- retain your masculinity. Oh, I- I'm trying. Believe me. All right. Drew, uh, what was the name of that school? Polytechnic. That was it? That's it. It, uh, it, wasn't, any, it wasn't anything that sounds something should be a little loftier sounding than that. Um, it used to be called preparatory school or something like that. And, and that, then now that school you go to from sixth grade or what? No, you, actually, they, they, I, I'm working on getting my kids in there pre-kindergarten. Really? To get them in, they get to stick it out. Oh, you're a legacy, Drew, and you're no, uh, that's a very competitive thing. But you what are student, you talking about here? I, you're student body president. Yes. All right. Wow. <laughs> Linnea. 
Hi. Hey. Hey. All right. Whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. And uh, like I said, you got a weird name. You're going to get it pronounced weird. That's all there is to it. So parents, name. don't name your kids weird things. <laughs> You're 22. Go ahead. Yeah, I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have been clean for like two and a half years. I had a really bad problem with speed. Mm-hmm. And um, lately I've been noticing that I've had like a lot of like panic attacks. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like things are like closing in on me mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just tripping out. I have to like get up and leave the room. Anytime my son starts like getting really obnoxious and loud, I have to leave and I feel like have, everything's closing in been, on me. How's your mood been? Um, really edgy. Okay. Just so irritable, anxious and with panic attacks. Yeah. But not depressed. No. Okay. This, th- what you're describing, believe it or not, and, and I don't know if this applies to you or not, but it is absolutely characteristic of cocaine. I, I did a lot of speed balls, yeah. Okay, cocaine is the one that does this. Uh, it, I, the coke mix. Yeah, I'm not surprised that, I, I mean, I, I, I keep expecting to see speed do this sort of thing, but it's not been my clinical experience. Cocaine does this characteristically, and usually the panic and the anxiety begins somewhere between three and five years after you stop using. Yeah. Which is exactly your situation. So will this, like, last forever? Well... Is there anything it, it, that I can do to like you know, it or? get you know get yourself a sponsor, do spot inventories, try to use the steps to help deal with this? There, there may be a place for medication in this. I, I don't uh, really want to use. I, it I know you don't, and you're. I, I understand, really and you're. I, I understand your sobriety is intact and whatnot, and and I certainly wouldn't want you to immediately go to medication. But there are non-addictive medications that can at least normalize somewhat what the cocaine has done to your brain chemistry. And recognize this is not some kind of psychological weakness. This is a biological event induced by the cocaine. All right, Drew. I hate to sound like one of my mom's old hippie buddies, but certainly she could benefit from, you know, I mean, couldn't she, you know, eat healthy and not drink any coffee and not get any nicotine and, like, go work out hard? Yes, and, yes all and good. get yes, into, like, absolutely. some yoga and, yes. and all that kind of crap? Absolutely. And, uh, and I was basically, you know, giving her the same kind of advice in terms of how she can use this, her step, her, her program, to alleviate the anxiety also. But it, but the, but you, uh, let me just share with you, I mean, I've seen a lot of this, that it's a pretty heavy biological burden, and sometimes you have to use something to to get it to settle down. Completely commend you though for not going for medication right off the top because that that does challenge at least your sobriety. And we'll be back. Hi, this is Barry Nolan from Hard Copy, and you are listening to Love Line. You certainly is. <laughs> Let me get the phone number out. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Dr. Drew. Adam West in tomorrow night. But for now, we're going to talk to Daniel, 15. Um, hi. Hey. Um, I'm just a question for Adam. Yeah. Okay, now me and my friends, we've been arguing about this for like the past half an hour. Mm-hmm. Okay, now earlier in the show, you said that... um. The only thing that he actually paid attention to in um, biology, mm-hmm. the movies of worms humping. Yeah. Now help us out here. How do they hump? Uh, uh, humping, or humping themselves. Yeah. Because worms hump themselves, right? They, they. Well, I don't even know if they do hump them. Yeah, worms are... Uh, I, Drew and I were trying to figure out what this term was. I think it's asexual, but he thinks it's something else that's not coming to his mind right now. Uh, but they have both parts. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I guess they, in order to, I don't know, do they impregnate themselves? Do they hump themselves, Drew? Or if you have both parts, uh, what do you do? I don't know. You know, Drew, you did go to high school, right? Yes, I did. And you went to college? And I studied worms. What was your major in college? Biology. Biology. You know what I was doing while you were off at your little uh, junior Ivy League school there with your uh, ascot smoking jacket? pipe hanging around with a guy's name uh, Biff. I was, in, I was in the heart in Thurston. <laughs> I was in the hard-nosed reality of uh, carpet cleaning. I know. You understand that? And that's where you encountered the worms. We didn't have time for worms. Worms? Well, we sucked one of those worms right up. So what we did. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't sit there and, and watch its mating rituals. You understand? Yeah. That was reality. Am I right, Daniel? Yeah. Adam, something about this, this my, my past has triggered something in you tonight. You're... you're you're reacting to this. You you guys with your silver spoons yes, in your mouth really thinking you're better than everyone else. <laughs> oh, yes. Mr. Student Body President bragging. Can't shut him up about it. 
leader of men, lover of women. I was a builder of ashtrays. <laughs> I made stuff out of clay. But I'll tell you, I was proud. Brought home that little uh, slab pot you to my mom. I think she used it as a hash box, a little stash box or something. You didn't have all that screwed up style that I had. You were depressed. True. No, I was free. Free to work with clay. Right. Free to f- throw clay. <laughs> Milton, 29, you're on Love Line. How's it going, uh, Drew and Adam? No, it's been better. Okay, first of all, without sounding too much like a, a Tom Snyder guest, I want to do say uh, thanks. I do uh, really enjoy your show. Listening on a regular basis, working evenings, it's something uh, nice I can look forward to. Thank you, Milton. What do you do for a living? I am uh, a supervisor at a men's homeless shelter. Really? Huh. Yeah. Now, how does that work? Well, um, basically, anybody without any place else to go, we get the rejects from the uh, the upper echelon of shelters in my community, um, Salvation Army and such. We allow uh, drunks and people on drugs to come in. So it's it's a, an interesting milieu we have going on down at uh, my place. Now, do they start getting in line at a certain time in the evening? Yeah, they line up uh, for an evening meal, which is served for an hour, and then uh, cots are uh, actually already assigned. We have assigned cots and uh, many uh, repeat offenders. Do you, do you have to turn people away each evening? Normally not. Normally uh, we have enough. There's uh, We have little... Emergency cots we can wheel out uh, if if we get uh, uh, a, a crowd in, but normally uh, enough people are are in and out that uh, we normally serve about sixty or seventy people in an evening. God bless you, Milton. You're out there making a difference. I'm trying. Not sitting there running for student body president. No, you're out working. You're hands-on guy. I am. You're kind of guy likes wearing a collar but rolling up his sleeves, right, Milton? That's true. Yeah, a, you're a making a difference. You're not just talking about it. You're doing it. That's right. Living we need it. more. God bless you. We need more men like you. And, and let me tell you, a lot of these guys, alcoholics and uh, drug addicts? Yes. Out of work, are they? Chronically, yes. Okay, perhaps we can get them into radio. <laughs> <laughs> They'd fit right in. Well, they're, they're slackers. Right. They have substance problems. Sure. They're not too bright, and they smell bad. I'm guessing their uh, physical appearance isn't that great. Doesn't matter, does it? Oh, these guys, these guys were bred for radio. Hey. That's their problem. They're trying to get jobs at the Arby's and, and their wiener schnitzel. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll have them. Uh, that, that's a good idea for career moves. Uh, maybe we can send them uh, down to the, some of the radio stations here. Yeah, and instead of that stupid bring your daughter to work week, why not bring a vagrant to work week? Sure. All right. That's, these are all plans. You should be writing this down, Milton. <laughs> all right, so what's your problem? Well, my problem is that... Uh, I've been married for eight and a half years and have a couple of kids and have a wife. Uh, we have had difficulty in our relationship. Um, we both had a bad summer last summer. Um, she had uh, an extramarital affair. I did. Um, and this was both, uh, we both had an understanding uh, that that this was going to take place, um, and that was it was a so be it kind of situation. And now, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 hold on, hold okay. on, hold on. Now Holding. we're gonna we're gonna backtrack for a second. First okay. off, would would you do cuddle up with Otis on one of the cots? Oh no 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 no. No, it was uh, it was a a female friend introduced me to a woman who. Oh, I'm I'm very grateful today that that I was introduced to her because it, of course, caused cataclysmic uh, consequences in my life, and I'm now dealing with some other issues, which is nice. So, so that's that's good. Okay, I don't know what kind of answer that was. You're, but believe me, you're going to confuse all the drunk and homeless with that kind of talk. <laughs> I'm sober and I have an apartment. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but okay, Milton. Yes, you had an affair. She had an affair. Correct. And you you put it out on the table when you were done. Well, while they, they agreed to beforehand, they agreed to beforehand. Yeah, it was even more or less for me. Uh, she was turning away my affection. I said, "Well, if you're going to do that, then here's what I'm going to do." And she said, "Fine." And then that, that's really escalating the problem, by the way. Yeah, when you do that kind of thing. Yes, hindsight is twenty yeah, twenty. That, that's uh, not the way to. If those of you out there, they're having uh, intimacy problems. 
don't say the way to handle it is, is screw you, I'm going to have to no. meet, it, meet my right. needs somewhere kids, else. Kids, don't try this at home. Yes, the introduction of a second or third penis or vagina is not going to help the right. situation. Do you have kids? Yes, yes two. We, we have two children. Ugh. And so, I mean, we. I am trying to work on the relationship. I've been, I've changed my tune and, and gotten my act cleaned up uh, for about the last eight months, made some definite lifestyle changes, and... She left for about four months, came back home. I had the kids in the interim, and I've, I've been trying to get uh, her to get back into more of an intimate relationship. And I'm coming to the point where I don't know if how much is enough. Am I waiting too long? Have you had any professional help? Yeah, we've gone to a counselor. All right. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Keep, going. Keep going. Keep that going. That is that is my think, answer. Think of your kids. They need a stable family. Please, if you if you if it is salvageable, and then rely on the professional opinion of your therapist, uh, do it on behalf of your kids, if nothing else. Lisa, right. fifteen, you're on the love line. Um, yes, I have a problem with like when I talk to guys on the phone because I like, talk to like a lot of guys on the phone, and like they always sit there and masturbate on the phone. And you let them do that? Uh, well, it like bugs me. Why do you tell? Why don't you tell them to stop? I don't know. I, uh, they just do it. Hold on, slow down. Okay. Okay, I'm done. All right. What? What was your problem? Um, when I talk to guys on the phone, they sit there and masturbate. All right. All right, slow down. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Engineer Mike. L- Lisa. Uh huh. Now this is not not like when you call your dad at work or anything, right? No. No. Yeah. No. Okay. You're talking about like boyfriends? Yeah, just like my friends. How many guys do you talk to every night? Um, probably about ten. Every night? Um, not every night, like. And they all invariably engage in this strain. How did it, how did this come about? I don't know. You know how did that start? Well, I'm sure it had nothing to do with Lisa. Right. It's right. all just bizarre yeah. circum uh, coincidence. Yeah. 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 I know that almost everybody I call <laughs> immediately starts whacking off. I call my I talk to my grandfather today. He, he was going, uh, he was going like a like a champ right, at the zoo. All right, all right, all right. Lisa. Yeah. Obviously, you're 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 facilitating this in some in some way. You're you're doing something that right. is enabling them to masturbate while they're talking to you on the and, phone. And even even if in so far as you allow it to occur, if you notice, my first question to you is, why do you allow this kind of nonsense? I, don't know. I, I just sit there and talk to them, and they start them all. No, no. Uh, then then hang up. You, if you're going to do that, I'm not going to talk well, to you. Well, obviously, Lisa doesn't mind that exactly. much. Exactly. Lisa promotes this in some fashion and then brings it upon herself. No. Oh, please, Lisa. No. Then, then uh, from now on, don't tell her these guys doing that. Tell them you will not speak to them again if they engage well, in this Well, first behavior. off, how do you know they're doing it? Because, like, I hear noises and, like, they tell me. And, like, one of my... She knows because they tell them. Tell her. What? You te- they tell you. Yeah. Adam? Oh, okay. Yeah. They tell you. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And you go. Oh, okay. Anyway, let me uh, let me finish. Your, let, let, let me get back to my shower. Uh, no, no, we're just talking. We just talk and like. Lisa. What? L- hey, Earth to Lisa. What? Let me explain something. You may be stupid, but we're not stupid, and neither are most of our callers. And listeners. I should say the callers are kind of dumb, but the listeners are not dumb on this show. Everybody who is hearing your voice is going, what the hell is up with this chick? Uh-huh. You are doing something. No, I'm not. I'm just sitting there and talking to him. Or then, then do what everybody else would do if somebody would do that and say, you know what? I'm not talking to you anymore. Mm-hmm. And hang up. All right, and, and don't tolerate it and tell them you will not speak to them if they engage in that kind of activity. Yeah, if you want them not to do it. I have the sneaking of suspicion. Of course she wants them to do it. But if she didn't want them to do it, she wouldn't resist. She, she, I said that to her three times. She didn't hear it. Well, you know, if I wasn't masturbating, I would have said that, too. I know. All right. Sad. 1-800-LOVE-191. Phone number 310-854-4455. Fax number... Again, Adam West, tomorrow night, the Deftones, Thursday night. Nobody Friday night, because we don't do a show Friday night. And, uh, Drew, I want to talk to this guy. All right. Phil, 25, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. Um, I've, uh, I've, got a, I've got a problem. You guys can help. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, I uh, just moved here from Arizona. Um, 
thought I'd get into a better job market. Unfortunately, it uh, doesn't seem to be happening for me. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm uh, living a pretty simple lifestyle, but uh, I'm getting kind of bored and lonely, you could say. Um, but I'm still, I work at a health club, and um, I see, um, you know, beautiful women walk in every day. Uh-huh. But I'm kind of uh, intimidated in a way because um, I'm broke. <laughs> Uh-huh. And it's kind of like I don't, you know, I can't really uh, say, hey, uh, let me uh, have my bus pick you up, you know, uh, to, to go on a date. Mm-hmm. Um, any suggestions? Women, all right, I'm going to dispel two big myths of dating. Okay. Men, and I'm speaking to the men, women don't care about money half as much as is you think they care about money. You make that into a big issue. I'm talking about men. Women, for the most part, are into a guy. They're, if a guy's cute, if a guy's nice, if a guy's got a good sense of humor, they'll certainly go out with a guy. You know, when it comes to marriage, yeah, you're, uh, you're towel boy at the local Y, and you're relying on the bus to get to work, well, then maybe that's something else. But even then, most of them will stick around for a while. Make sure you're a loser. <laughs> give you a couple of years of uh, you know fluff, fluffing and folding mm-hmm. before they dump you. So I'm going to dispel that one. And the one I'm going to dispel f- for women is one we talked about earlier, which is men are not so boob-obsessed as you think they are. They really aren't. They'll date a flat-chested woman if they think a woman's cute in the face or has a nice butt or a nice personality. The same thing goes. So those are the two things. And the people that hide behind these, it's just sort of an excuse or a crutch or something. Guys do that all the time. Oh, look at him. Wonder how he got her. Oh, he's feeding her the nose candy. Oh, yeah. He's buying her drugs, the picking nose her up. nose candy. Oh, yeah. That's that's the way we talk. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I did some swinging in the 80s, Ann. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, Phil, seriously, if you pack a picnic for a woman and take her to the park... That'll go so much further than if you took her to some, you know, fancy restaurant. The fact that you actually planned it, and I mean, women love that stuff. That'll go so much further. Uh, but let me let me give a quick disclaimer. One of the mm-hmm. things they love about that is if a guy can't afford the restaurant, and decides to pack the picnic anyway. No, that's Th- not that's true. one because element. Even if he can't afford it, that means he did. He put thought into it. Right. He just didn't make a reservation. He actually like planned the no. picnic. I'll that tell you. I'll tell further. you what the key word with this is that women appreciate hassle. They love it when the guy's hassled. The more trouble a guy can go. I mean, if you if you give her a uh, hand a bouquet and you say this flower came from that mountain and this one came from this mountain and that one came from that. Oh, they love it. The more hassle you can go through, the better it's they like not it. Hassle. It's thought. Thought. Yes. Hassle. You're thinking about being hassled. So, so nice guys don't finish last? It's trouble. And it's effort. It's effort. And come on, you equate yeah, that. Yeah, it's not trouble. It's effort. It's actually thinking about it and putting time into it. Right. It's caring enough yes, exactly. to, to spend a little bit of yourself. Buying to be a yourself. bouquet of roses off the side of the freeway is not, right. you know. They want you to be hassled. <laughs> Understand. And guys are very pragmatic. Guys like, hey, you stole that pic- picnic basket, didn't you? Great. Let's eat. Well, okay, good. so but Anne is right in her own her own retarded way, which is she wants I'm... you to. D- women love that; they love the effort. Why is that retarded? <laughs> because you said it, and I, it can't be right. But she's right. You're an idiot. She is right. I hate you. Well, all right, Anne. Come well, cool. on. Hey, Anne, my bus will pick you up at uh, you know all the right. bottom of the weekend. Look, you I'm have married, some. But hey, thanks. You can borrow someone's car, can't you, Phil? Um, and believe me, this poor this poor crap don't go for Anne, but. You can go get yourself a picnic basket. You go over to one of these little markets like Trader Joe's or something that says Trader in front of it. Mm-hmm. Really, you end up trading money for the stuff, but they still call Trader. And you get yourself some of that little smoked salmon and some brie and you know stuff from other places. And some crackers, and you pack it up there, and you, you pick some wildflowers, and you borrow a buddy's car, and you do it upright. Sounds like a plan. All right, Phil, so th- this is no excuse. Right on. Plenty cool. of chicks at the health club. Especially <laughs> especially with younger women, they're not really thinking about people's careers or, you know, they, I mean, they may, may like to see that somebody can be serious and uh, create a stable environment for them, but they're not, everybody's taking risks on everybody else when you're young. I mean, right. nobody knows what they're going to end up And believe like. me, Drew, I worked at a health club when I was poor. And look what's happened I didn't now. get one lick of 
What? Woman part. Boy, and, that is just hard to imagine, Adam. I taught a class. I just specifically got into this so I could meet women, and uh. I taught a boxing class, and all I had was a bunch of guys. Mm. And you still didn't learn anything from that message. I had sex with four of them, but oh, no, I didn't, I didn't learn anything. Amy, 20. Hi, guys. Hey, you're on Love Line. Hey, um, okay, I have this problem. I was with this guy on Saturday night, and... We became intimate, and the condom got lost inside of me. And we were looking around on the bed, you know, on the floor, thinking it had fallen off. Mm-hmm. It and had. I didn't think anything that I, it, that had never happened to me before. Mm-hmm. So I didn't think it would actually be inside of me. What did he do? I mean, he used the condom incorrectly in some fashion, right? What did? He, what went wrong? I don't. That's, uh, that's what I'm asking you guys. It just I don't know. it just rolled off his tongue. No, no, I don't think so because he he applied it in some improper fashion. Well, let me explain something, Drew. Not all penises are are the same shape. Right. I have a friend who's got a penis. It's called the wedge. The thing thing looks like a you know like a like a dunce cap. <laughs> Did you name it, Adam? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I named it The Wedge. Aww, that's so okay, beautiful. guys, but this happened twice. The wedge. Twice? Because I figured it had fallen off, so we, we I hope you're getting one on. And then I went to the bathroom, and I had to, like, pull them both out. Wow. And it scared me only because only because of the, you know, like, STDs right, and, and, and all that. And pregnancy, too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I've never had a problem with that. What do you mean, never had a problem with that? I've never had a scare like that, and I'm I'm on the pill, and I know everything's oh. not 100%. Wow. You yeah. know, her, when she was pulling the uh, consecutive um, condoms out of out of the vagina, I, it I'm, scared me. I was picturing, like, you know when you go to the circus and they have those little cars pull up, and like a hundred clowns get out, <laughs> get out of like a little uh, Mini Cooper? No. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. But I don't know why either. Thinking about that. But that's just wonderful. And so, Amy. Yeah. Are you going to be with this guy again? What? I, I, well, <laughs> I you, don't know. Do you know I'd his, like to do, be. Do you know his first name? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Uh, what what shape was his penis? Normal size. And that's what's freaking me Normal out. Normal shape, though? Not the wedge? Um, It was a little bit thicker, but it was long. Uh-huh. This is normal man size. I would say six inches. I mean, that's average, right? Right. And it, the weight. Uh, wait a minute. 5.1. 5.1. Do you hear me? 5.1. Oh, my God. Not six. 5.1. Okay. Now, it, all right. It rolled off. All right. So uh, get a new condom. Tell him to hang on to it at the base hey, a little right. bit. Right. Or... at the base. He has to roll it all the way down. He And he, he can't, you know, he's when he's done, he has to come pull it out immediately. And hold it at the base when he withdraws. Drew, do you recommend one of those uh, glad twist tie no. type things they put on garbage bags? No. You don't? No. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Sandra, 20. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, I have a tattoo on my toe that my friend gave me. It, and she gave it to me with like a push pin, not a thumbtack, but a push pin. And um, like a bottle of ink from the art store. Oh my god! And it was black ink. Anyways, like I turned out okay and everything. I got it like months ago, and like I didn't have to get my foot amputated or anything. Mm. And um, okay, so one of my friends here saw it because it was out of town, and it was just kind of a dumb thing that we did, you know. And just oh come on, I want a tattoo right now. So one of my friends asked me if I would give her one, but I said no, because, like, what if you, like, have to get your foot amputated, and then you're going to sue? All right, now, hold on a second. I'm not hanging up on you, Sandra, but whatever happened to TPing people's houses? Yeah. You know, like, when you wanted to do stupid stuff? Yeah. Uh, whatever happened to just, like, good old... Shaving cream. ...fashion vandalism? Now, you Homeless a, vandalism. get a few ve- beers, you, you felt a little rambunctious... So you like you went down and like egged someone's house, or you you took a leak on someone's car that you knew from high school that was parked out front, or you TP'd the principal's house. Or, why aren't people like putting pins in themselves now? Whatever happened to going up and screwing up other people's junk? Why does everyone screw up their own junk now? Well, I guess we'll find out, Sandra. Okay, um, so this time it was a needle, like a needle type pin. You know, the kind that looks like just a, like, it's just a stick pin. All right, we're picturing something straight and pointy, okay? Okay. All right. Um, and it, but this time, 
it was all we had was Bic, okay, blue ink. That's Jesus. what she wanted. It's just like a little face. Hey, Sandra, what are you? What are you in prison? <laughs> are you in prison? No, I realize that this is not like the best thing to do. Not but, the you best know, thing to do. It's, um, <laughs> it's retarded. You guys make some uh, marsh uh, rice crispy squares okay, or something and watch TV for Christ's sake. Listen to this. Um, her dog ate a pen one time and she called the poison control and they said that blue and black ink is not poisonous. That's all that I wanted to know. <laughs> is it poisonous? I mean, I realize it's not the best thing to do, but this is what we're doing. And I just want to know, I mean, there's no real danger. It's a sterile little tin. Well, that you're going to, yeah, that, believe you me. You know. <laughs> it's sterile. You had it autoclaved and you put it through glutaraldehyde and. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, it was just a, a big lighter. Uh, right. Big blue ink. Yeah, well, it, it's a terribly, terribly unsanitary thing to do in terms of potential for infection. And I don't know that the ink is toxic. I, I doubt that it All is. Right, there's but, a, little, like a little chuckling going on back there. But I, I have a suggestion for Sandra and her buddies next time they get bored. Uh, why don't you just whack each other upside the head with a frickin' oar? Yeah, there you go. That sounds cool. That would be great. And you don't have to sterilize the oar. There's no risk of infection from an oar, is there, Drew? Not if, you do, if it's blunt trauma. It doesn't and it's, if yeah. that gets boring after a while, you could tell the person to put like an apple in their mouth, and then you could whack the back of the person's head with an oar and see how far the apple rolls. Good game. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Well... Not enough time left in the show to give out some more bad advice. So we're just going to wrap it down here and wrap it up here. Uh, Adam West will be our guest tomorrow night. I anticipate a lot of fun because I know he is a fun guy and he does not mind a little ribbon once in a while. And I'm just the man to give him the ribbon. Huh. He's a cool guy. Of course, he's uh, original Batman, and I'm sure we'll have many a tale to tell. Uh, not the least of which will be uh, what Burt Ward said in his book about him. So we'll get to that. We'll get to everything else. I want to thank the uh, lovely Lisa for doing the phones tonight, the beautiful Sherry for doing the phones tonight, the angular one, producer Ann, for producing the show tonight, the one nut wonder engineer Mike for wearing You're a clean gay. shirt, <laughs> and working his magic on the keyboard. Our keyboard, control board. I want to thank the president. You'll never get over that, will you? Our relationship has changed forever. Dr. Drew. What a shame. Student body president, 1977. 76. Oh, Christ, you are old. Possibly we'll get that picture of you from 74, freshman oh. year, which should just, my head should explode <laughs> when I see that. Uh, until then, I'm Adam Carolli, is Dr. Drew, and I'm saying mahalo. Been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.